This is one of my favorite gadgets. Probably had it well over five years. So it has been a good one. It stopped pumping with the red indicator telling me the batteries are low. But I just replaced them a couple of weeks before. I went ahead and put new batteries in. Still wouldn't pump, but the LED would indicate low battery. I pressed on the plus and minus buttons a bit. Then it wouldn't do anything. No red or green LED would light up. I had been having to press pretty hard on the buttons for a while now, so I thought maybe I would cracked a PC board. So I thought it's worth taking a closer look at. I don't see but three screws. Two here on the bottom, and they are pretty short. And one tucked up under the neck. This one is very hard to turn. Seems like it's threaded in a long ways. The years of hard water have definitely taken a toll on the finish, but just because it doesn't look pretty anymore, no reason to just throw it away. Guess I should have done a little better job of washing it out. I'll have soap everywhere now. So the bottom is loose. Feels like some wires holding it. The battery compartment is part of this assembly, so that would make sense. Top comes right off. Two plugs are all I see connecting it. And yes, they are labeled. The red and black are bat. So that's nice. Get it all pulled apart and see what I have here. Little motor and pump. Been needing a cleaning inside for a while now, but didn't have a good enough reason to pull it apart. First thing I'm going to do is put the batteries back in it. The battery diagram on the bottom of this thing could be a lot better. Well, it's flashing red like the batteries are low, but they are new. I'll put the meter on and see what I'm getting. Wow, dropping down close to 4 volts. That's a problem. I'll hit the mechanical first, and that seems pretty tight. I hope the pump is not shot. Feels like the motor is the tight spot. Yep, definitely the motor. I'll pull it out and see. A bit of soap on it. That shouldn't be there but it could be for me pulling it apart. It's freeing up, so I think I'll put some oil on it and see what it does. That's already turning so much better. Could it be the thing just needs oiling every once in a while? I'll put the motor back in and see if that was the problem. How about that? It really does come all apart. Pretty good little kink in the hose there, but that's had to have been that way a long time.
Even the belt still feels in pretty good shape. Looks like they use pretty good materials to make this thing. I'm going to take a look at the switches. I really have to press hard on the plus one to get the LED to blink. And while I have it apart, might as well take a good look at the PC board. The motor seems to be working fine now. I think the switches need to be replaced. Probably could live with them, but the plus switch is really in pretty bad shape. So these look like the standard 6mm momentary push switch. Push force is probably on the high end, so I know I won't have any just like these. 5 and a quarter millimeter, so probably a 5mm height from base to stem top. So I have a few 5mm height switches left. The ones I have are a low actuation force. Don't know how that will do under the rubber enclosed buttons. But there is one way to find out. I'll put a bit of fresh solder on the pins. Melt through the coating they have on the board. Rather not have that coating sucked up into the vacuum desoldering gun. I'll do a quick check just to see before I sorted the new switches. We'll barely have to touch the buttons to activate the switch. That will probably be a problem, but going to go with these for the time being. I suspect just rubbing a hand across the top of the buttons will probably push the switch. Next time I'm ordering parts, I'll get a few high actuation force switches to replace these with. Other than not having the exact right switches, I think I'm in pretty good shape here. This thing is actually made a lot better than I was expecting. Get the bottom back in place. I want to make sure I get the right plug into the right socket. That is still a very tight screw. Well, seems to be working. Now to see if all that trouble was worth it. Probably should have put a bit less in it, just in case I have to take it apart again. Well, I'm making a mess, but it looks like it lives to pump again. While I like the soap dispenser, it is a little finicky about the soap. Of course, the simple human refill soap is just too expensive. And soft soap and most of the knockoffs I've tried are a bit too thick for this thing. But Sam's has a soap that works perfectly, and it was only about $7 a gallon. None of that fancy scented stuff, just a soap to wash your hands with. And the gallon lasts a long time. Can't take something apart that has a PC board in it without taking a little tour of the circuit. The U1 here is a microchip PIC 16LF1823, 8-bit microcontroller, one of their extreme low power CPUs. And U4 here is very interesting. It is a MOSFET H-bridge. I think the only reason to use that would be if you want to run the motor in both directions. Even though I didn't notice it, it may be to keep soap from dripping out. The motor is run just a tiny bit in reverse at the end. Only thing I can think of. A red and green LED for an indicator. The only time the red lights up is when turning it off or the battery gets low. The green lights up when you press the plus or minus buttons. D1 up here is to protect from the batteries being put in backwards. And with the likes of the battery diagram they have on the bottom of this thing, that may be one of the most important parts in it. My new switches.
and the copyright 2014. If I've had this thing eight years, it really is a very well-made gadget. It's possible I've had it that long. Time flying so fast. On the bottom of the board, not much. I would imagine this is an infrared LED and photo transistor. A couple of filter caps and the motor and battery connectors. And that's about all there is to it. Thank you for watching.